I'll call the meeting to order. You'll notice that's a slight change on the agenda. They didn't know I was coming in. I have a chemo week, a recovery week, and a good week. This starts my good week, so I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, we have a quorum. All three commissioners are present. The flag salute. We'll get a veteran. We'll get a well-decorated veteran. Mr. Mason, could you stand up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I move that we approve the minutes of October 31st, 2016. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Are there any additions, deletions, corrections? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Minutes are approved. Public comment. There is no public comment. Anybody want to make a public comment? Then we will go into uh, our employee recognition and we'll start out with a drawing. Mr. Larry Mason, would you like to come up and do the drawing for the United Way? I'm going to pick on you all day today. <laughs> you may be the only veteran in here that has more ribbons and medals of higher order than I do. <laughs> you can look. Pull your own name. <laughs> Aline Stewart. <laughs> wow. Go ahead and tell what it is. You're going to have to speak into the mic. It's a $25 gift certificate to the Shire. The next item is recognition of Lewis County employees and Glenn, you're going to take that for us? Does that look familiar, Larry? <laughs> Just like it. Yes. Captain Larry B. Mason, veteran of Vietnam, who joined the Michigan Air National Guard. 
awarded the Air Force Cross for extraordinary heroism in Vietnam. While attacking an enemy target, his B-57 tactical jet bomber was hit repeatedly with a wounded navigator aboard, one engine shut down and the other one on fire, approximately 30 square feet of surface area missing from the right wing, and most of the electrical system knocked out. This young pilot nursed his plane to a safe landing in friendly territory. There is more to that story. His Air Force Cross, which is one of the highest awards you can be um, awarded, um, reads for extraordinary hero heroism. Commander of a B-52 tactical jet bomber of the 8th Tactical Bob Bomber Squadron in action on 15 March 1966. On this date, while attacking the heavily defended target Captain Mason's aircraft was hit repeatedly by 50 millimeter and 37 millimeter shells, set fire to the right engine, created extreme vibrations in the left engine. One shell exploded in the rear cockpit, wounding the navigator, severing a section of the wing, deprived the aircraft of most of the electrical power. Wind blasting through a large hole in the fuselage scattered debris and dirt into the cockpit, temporarily blinding Captain Mason. As he regained his sight, he realized that a safe bailout could not be affected because of the wounded navigator's condition. With one engine shut down and the other on fire, with about 30 square feet of the surface missing from the right wing, Captain Mason, with complete disregard for his own personal safety, attempted to return flight to his home base. And just to explain that, the procedure here was to bail out, but his navigator and backup was so badly wounded he would not have survived a bailout, so he decided to, to land the plane instead. Flight conditions were further hampered by inoperative radios, no hydraulic pressure for oxygen, severe vibration. He didn't know the gear position or the fuel level. Through outstanding airmanship, he piloted the crippled aircraft to a safe landing in friendly territory. By his extraordinary heroism, superb airmanship, and aggressiveness in the face of the enemy, Captain Mason reflected the highest credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. Mr. Mason, could you come up and receive a certificate for our grat gratitude? Is this thing working? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I was very lucky that day. And there's several veterans that are sitting here today that were very lucky back then, too. We all did our job. Thank you very much.
hand. And then over the, if, if the veterans could please stand up. I, I know along with Captain Mason, we have Captain Walton, Colonel Averill. I don't see Archie in there. There he is, Archie. Um, any of the veterans, please come up, state your name and branch of service, and, uh, and then we'll get a picture of all of you. And I could never forget the Marine. <laughs> She'd never let you forget it either. No, yeah. that's true. Brad Clark, United States Marine Corps, 2005 2010. Colonel Ron Averill, United States Army Military Intelligence Corps, 1959 to 1989. Steve Walton, Captain U.S. Navy, retired, 1979 to 2004. Excuse me. Captain Walton, I was always told aviators couldn't speak without, he was a P-3 pilot, so there, okay, I feel better. That's right. <laughs> um, Tanya Han, United States Navy, um, 1986 to 1991, Petty Officer Third Class. Uh, Tim Ward, United States Marine Corps, uh, 83 and 87. Jim Winchell, 1968 to 1972, United States Army. Thank you. Archie Smith, United States Army, 1983 to 1990. Danette York, United States Marine Corps, 1985 to 1988. Art Fuller, United States Navy, 1983 to 19, or excuse me, 2012, Naval Engineer. Bruce Kimsey, U.S. Army, 1995 to 1999. Smokey Paget, Washington Army National Guard, 88 to 94. Sandy Andrus, United States Army, 1974 to 1976. Larry Mason, Lieutenant Colonel, United States Air Force, 1958 through 1996. Commander Bill Schulte, Coast Guard, from 1978 to 2003. Thank you all for your service. You want to get a picture with all of us? So, thank you all for your service. One more round of applause. So I will entertain a motion for the notice agenda. 
I make a motion to approve one resolution, number 16-298. Second. 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 I can't believe you're all leaving right before the most exciting part of this meeting. The motion has been made and seconded for the noticed agenda. Steve, did you leave? <laughs> Morning, Commissioner. Steve Walton, Central Services Director. Speaking to item number one on the notice agenda, resolution number 16-298. Uh, this notice will be published in the Chronicle on the 10th and the 15th of this month and in the East County Journal on the 9th and the 16th of the month. This notice also uh, announces two hearings. The first hearing will be on the 21st of this month at 10 a.m. in this room. It will be to uh, present the preliminary budget and solicit comment from the public. Also on the 21st, in the evening, there will be a, 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 a what am I saying here? A, um, <laughs> a public information session. I was going to call it a hearing, and it's not a hearing. It's a public information session, and uh, it will be at 5.30 in the WSU training room downstairs for any uh, members of the public who would be interested in coming in and, and uh, hearing more details about the budget uh, in terms of process and the particulars of the 2017 budget. Uh, that's what we'll be covering. Again, that's at 5.30 on the 21st in the WSU training room. And then the second hearing will be on December 5th at 10 a.m. in this room. And the purpose of that hearing will be to adopt the 2017 budget and to set the property taxes for 2017. We will be putting the budget on the website, the county website, lewiscountywa.gov. We'll also be having it at the Centralia College campus in Wharton and in Centralia at the Centra or uh, Chehalis Library, as well as the senior centers. So are there any questions? Thank you for all your work. I know you and Becky have been working very hard the past few weeks, doing a lot of work on this, so thank you. Well, Becky gets all the credit there. She has really been working hard on this. <coughs> you can give her credit. We'll give you credit along with her, and we appreciate the job that you two do. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Questions? Thank you, Steve. Thank you. All in favor of the resolution numbers 16298? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? Notice agenda is approved. I move that we approve the consent agenda item number two, resolution number 16 299, approval of warrants. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Good morning, Commissioners. Welcome back, Commissioner Schulte. Suzette Smith, Chief Accountant, Auditor's Office, Financial Services Division, here to present to you agenda item number two. This is resolution 16-299, and it is the weekly approval of warrants and payroll against the various claims and various county departments. Excuse me. This week we had 230 regular warrants, number 757-890 through 757-984 and 758076 through 758210, total of $1,058,809.60. In addition, we had payroll taxes and related benefits. Those were warrants number 758211 through 758396, and automatic deposits number 1 through 485, for a total of 671 warrants and automatic deposits. Dollar amount, $3,398,081.10. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Suzette. Thank you, Suzette. Any further discussion on the consent agenda? Call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Consent agenda is approved. Next, we'll have a hearing to consider revisions to Lewis County countywide planning policies. This hearing will be in two parts. Start out with a staff brief. After the staff brief, there will be a question and answer period. Closing the question and answer period, we will have the formal adoption or formal hearing and then any comments. If you wish to sign up for comments on it, please uh, sign up at the podium. 
Lee Napier. Thank you. I'll begin. Lee Napier, Director of Community Development for Lewis County. Um, joining me is Fred Evander, our senior long-range planner, and I will turn it over to him to talk about the countywide planning policies and the hearing today. And I think we have somebody signing up for a comment. Just to note, let the chair know. Perfect. So the countywide planning policies are a requirement of the Growth Management Act. It's something that is required to be done to coordinate the planning of the various jurisdictions within a county. We originally adopted uh, our countywide planning policies in 1995. We tend to look at them every year. Typically, there's not really any changes. Uh, this year, we have proposed a couple of changes that was proposed by the um, Planned Growth Committee, which is, uh, includes representatives for each of the communities within Lewis County. I know that I think all three of you were um, at those Planned Growth Committee meetings this year. The Planned Growth Committee me met three times uh, reviewing these changes. Um, they ultimately... Uh, were forwarded to the Planning Commission unanimously. The Planning Commission held a public hearing on them um, and recommended them to you unanimously as well. We've done all the procedural steps necessary for you to take action on these today. We forwarded them to the Department of Commerce for their review, ran a uh, State Environmental Policy Act uh, determination and non-significance on, on them, all of that stuff. So. Um, that, in short, is the uh, countywide planning policies. If you have any questions, um, please let us know. Looking through most of the changes that you've made, a lot of them look like they're just housekeeping, cleaning up the language so it's um, more accurately reflect how we do business. That's exactly right. Yeah, we looked at these, and um, thank you. The, the majority of these are housekeeping items, um, things that either we, um, we were doing um, or perhaps unclear language. Some also, um, um, for, for instance, um, the, this, the, uh, some of the, the language is perhaps unnecessarily restrictive, and so what we've done is we've gone in and expanded out that language just to make sure that um, there is that level of flexibility that would be desirable there. Um, the one that I'm thinking of specifically um, is... Are you talking about resource lands of long-term significance? Oh, well, the one I was thinking of specifically is 1.7 on page 2. If you look at that, we actually define each of the zones within the county. We don't need to do that in here. And so um, we just in instead said, rather than defining each of those zones, let's go ahead and just say if it's consistent with state law, that's, that's appropriate. So... Um, that's, that's an example. We went through and did uh, similar changes throughout the document. So if state law changes, you don't have to change this. Exactly. And if we were to change a zone, for instance, if we created a new zone, we wouldn't have to come back in and change the countywide planning policies. Or if, say, we no longer had um, a freeway commercial zone or whatever it might be, if we renamed it something, we wouldn't have to change this. So... That's, that's the whole idea of uh, some of the changes for certain. Does the board have any other questions? No. I think you've done a very comprehensive job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Does the audience have any questions? Any questions at all? Larry, any questions on airport zoning? No, sir. <laughs> With no questions, we will close the question and answer period. And Fred and Lee, would you like your comments incorporated into the record? You bet. You bet. Yes. Are there any statements, public statements? Has anybody signed up? Colonel. Colonel Ron A. Roll, Centralia. I think that uh, sometimes we have a tendency to, to do things 
uh, without the public understanding fully what is going on when, when we say that we're going to be doing policies. Under the Growth Management Act, growth management is planned by all jurisdictions separately. So the county has a growth management plan, the city of Centralia, Morton, Winlock, they all have their own. What the growth planning management plan did, something somewhat unusual as you look at the plan, is it recognized that within counties, if there wasn't some type of coordination, these plans could actually do, do harm rather than good. And so they, they placed one of the few areas where the county can talk to the cities about what they should and they shouldn't do so that we can be consistent with each other was to hold or to have this planning group, which consists of the county and, and all the cities, supported by our community uh, development uh, department. That has been working very well. Another thing that you need to know is that under growth management, you can only change the plan once a year. And it's in January. And if you make any changes, it's a year process to get there. And it goes through the planning commission and the commissioners and, and, and all of the jurisdictions that are, that are involved. Uh, we've made fewer of those through uh, the, the past few years. But it's a, a very important process as long as we're stuck with the growth management plan as it exists, this process is terribly necessary. And I think that one of the things that we can really pat ourselves on the back about is that in Lewis County, we work very well together, making sure that we're, we are consistent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you. Any other statements? Any other speakers? Any comments from the board? If you look at this, and I'll agree with Ron, is that if you get too detailed and shall and shall not, it gets restrictive. And we don't need to do that necessarily. We can be general and say follow the RCWs instead of listing everyone. And then as changes happen in the state, we don't have to update and change ours if we make it a little bit more generic than specific. With that, I will entertain a motion to approve resolution number 16-300. I make a motion to approve re resolution number 16-300 uh, for the Lewis County wide planning policies. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? Resolution is approved. Seeing no further items on our agenda, I move that we adjourn. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. You are invited to immerse yourself in the beauty of nature in all four corners of Lewis County, Washington. From our fields to your table, farms in the west share their bounty. Limitless landscapes, forests and mountains beg to be explored in the east. Fish our many rivers and lakes in the south and discover where history and culture intersect in our twin cities. Explore it all by visiting our Facebook page and plan your next getaway at discoverlewiscounty.com. Culture, history, and adventure all come alive when you discover Lewis County.